Hello and welcome to the SheClix webinar about choosing the right paper for printing your images. I'm Angela Nicholson and I'm the founder of SheClix. This webinar is sponsored by Permajet, a multi award winning brand committed to providing the best fine art and digital photo paper and canvas media. 19 years of extensive technical inkjet knowledge and their advanced free ICC profiling services are all provided to help amateurs and professionals alike produce that all important perfect print for business or for pleasure. So thank you very much to Permajet. So tonight's webinar is presented by Louise Hill, who has been a photographer from a very young age and has been on the uh, camera club judging and uh, lecturing circuit for over 12 years now. And I'm delighted that she's able to join us tonight. Hi, how are you, Louise? I'm very well, thank you. And how are you this evening? I'm very well. Thank you. It seems a long, long time since we actually met. And I remember exactly when it was. Me too. Well, I don't remember where it was, but I know where it was. Um, we were in sea houses, weren't we? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you were doing, just come off the boat, I think. And I was just going down to uh, book on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I had my little dog with me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was a puppy then. So that was a long time <laughs> yes, ago. It was. Yeah. So anyway, it's lovely to see you. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. And I know you um, you've been working with Permajet for quite a long time now, but you were a photographer well before that time, weren't you? Yes, I thought um, that was a very good introduction that uh, I've been taking photographs of a, from a very young age. So that was very well put. So not to uh, <laughs> <laughs> announce my age. So well done. <laughs> yes, you, I'm uh, sad to say or glad to say, yes, over 40 years I've been actually taking photographs and um, and I've had quite a, a, a varied photographic career, really. And mm -hmm. um, in 2006, I was actually made redundant. And I thought, right, I'm going to take this opportunity to practice and concentrate on my photography. And so I started doing my accreditations then. And, um, and I just sailed through them, thank God. It was hard work, but I thoroughly enjoyed having something to aim at. And, um, and then I was actually asked to see whether I would like to present lectures and tell my journey, because I don't just have one genre of photography. I actually um, actually shoot nature, sport, fine art, and um, and a few landscape, and and I think because I've got such a, um, a varied genre, it's very easy for me to actually try and teach people that if you can actually take nature, you can do sport, and if you can do mm -hmm. sport, you can do nature, and people don't automatically think about that, and um, and so I actually started lecturing and judging, and um, and hence I joined Permajet twelve years ago as well, so. Um, to increase my photographic journey. And that's really why I've learned my love of papers because I was using Permajet before I started here. And, but now I've actually excelled and started to use a whole range of papers. And it makes a huge difference. And it's just nice to be able to give something back, which is why I'm here tonight, to try and help people choose the right paper for their images. Thank you. And I guess as you shoot a variety of different subjects, you've got a yep. really good handle on how some finishes suit different subjects better than others. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, although obviously the range, particularly of permajet papers, extends to over 30 different types of paper. I don't actually use all 30 types of paper because that's absolutely, you know, ridiculous amount of papers to choose from. So any photographer, what we actually advise is actually to actually slim your selection down so you're using three or four different paper types and I have to say I find that the fiber-based family suits my particular images really really well and I also use some of our smooth fine art range which I will be talking about later on during the evening so I think it's important to find the right paper but you do tend to concentrate on a paper type that suits your images and you do tend to stick with it but obviously yeah. you try different papers and it makes a huge difference to your image and I think your um, viewers will be absolutely astounded once they actually have the confidence to try other papers, then I think they'll be astounded to see how much their photograph can be enhanced. Fantastic. OK, well, if you'd like to um, start your presentation, that would be great. Thank you very much. Great. OK, thank you. Right. Well, thank you very much, viewers. It's uh, lovely to um, hear that you're actually logged on for this evening and I'm really pleased to be here to actually share some of my knowledge on choosing the right paper for your images. So off we go. Right, choosing the right paper 
the most common question that we actually get asked is what paper would you recommend for X, Y, and Z? However, we always say it's not our image. So we don't really know what look or feel you are wanting to achieve. There is no right or wrong paper choice. And that's what you've got to remember. Only one that gives you a print that you are happy with is the one that you will tend to be uh, using regularly. Choosing the right paper is an important part of the image making process, as it is the key to a high quality print that best represents your artistic vision. Because you're choosing a paper and it is often subjective and highly influenced by how you want your print to look. However, many papers will have characteristics that are more suited to certain images. And this can not only make or break a print, but completely alter its ambiance. So the combination of a great image and paper can elevate a print from ordinary to captivating. Anyone who's printed their work will have experienced that magic moment where you get the combination just right and it comes to life off the printer. The choice of paper is a very personal, as in the main we print for ourselves, but there is a marriage between the actual image and the paper. If the resulting print does not feel right, then either change the image, exposure wise or framing, or the actual paper type. Varying base tints might apply. So whether you're actually doing a portrait, for example, where you want a warmer paper, so you want to look at the skin tones, or go for a, a neutral or a cooler paper. So it actually brings that lovely crispness to the actual image. Do not be swayed away from trying a paper by the opinion of friends or peers. It's a very easy for someone to say, oh, I wouldn't print that on X, Y, and Z. But if you're happy with it, then you use the paper that suits you. The lighting conditions you view the print in will affect how the print is perceived. And this can affect your paper choice. Ideally, halogen bulbs with a color temperature of 5,000 Kelvin and a full color spectrum are preferred. Think about the color of the room, of the, of the walls in the room that you're actually in, that you manipulate your images in, because this will also have an impact on the print. If you've actually got a, a bright red room, for example, on the actual room that you're working in, then that will have a color cast effect on the image on your eyes when you're absolutely manipulating your image. So be careful. A neutral wall color is ideal. Heavily textured papers can look worse on a small A4 sheet. So as the texture on a paper can be overpowering on the image. So think big. A lot of people actually print on A3 or A3 plus, particularly if you're going to go in for competitions and uh, international exhibitions, for example. But what you've got to think about is that certain printers can't handle heavy and thick fine art papers. The higher end printers, such as the larger A3 plus printers, the Canon Pro 10s and the Epson P700s have more inks. So therefore a wider color gamut is achievable. Now I'm going to go through a few glossary terms because when you're actually reading about the papers, these words will come through. And it's always interesting to understand what they actually mean. When you see the word DMAX in the description of the paper, DMAX is the black density that a paper can achieve. A higher DMAX allows for blacker blacks and a wider tonal range, making an excellent choice for monochrome and high contrast images. GSM stands for grams per square meter. Now this actually refers to the weight of the paper. The higher the GSM, the heavier and thicker the paper. Papers with a higher GSM are perfect for those who are serious about achieving exhibition quality results, such as for fine art and gallery prints. Now OBA, you might not have heard this, but it actually stands for optical brightening agents. Now this is added to the paper during its production to help take it from its natural yellow tone to a much brighter white. Now, whilst generally a minimal amount is used, OBAs do have the potential to break down depending on the conditions the prints are stored in. And this will cause the paper to return back to its natural yellow state over an extended period of time. So if you're producing archival fine art work, and when I mean that, I mean, if you want your actual print to actually last 75 to 80 years, 
OBAs shouldn't be used for your prints. Now, surface finishes. The standard paper finishes available are gloss, semi-gloss and matte. And these come in many different varieties, which alter the overlook feel and uh, look of the paper. Choosing which paper finish to use is largely down to your own preference. Some people love gloss, but dislike matte. So if you've actually got a really vibrant, um, strong, vibrant colors, you might want something on a shiny paper to really stand out and emphasize that lovely richness of the gloss. Alternatively, they might actually prefer a matte, which is actually more of a subdued look and it actually will soften the image down. So that would actually um, really give it more of an artistic look. But each option has its own purpose and ways of enhancing the qualities of an image. And all these points should be taken into consideration when choosing the right paper. Glossy surfaces are often overlooked because of the reflection that can be experienced in certain lighting conditions, such as when displaying prints in exhibition format. So if you're going to submit your work in an exhibition and it's actually judged on a, a light screen, sometimes the actual lights from the screen can actually interfere with the actual image itself. So think about that when you're actually choosing the paper. Due to the coating on the gloss and the way they retain ink, these can achieve a wider color gamut and vibrancy and a much higher DMAX. They are also easier to handle than matte papers, which can be sensitive to marks. Glossy paper can offer a wonderful depth and clarity that can be hard to be found on matte paper. And this often suits vibrant modern images such as studio portraits or colorful landscapes. Or some of your actual members have been doing a lot of water shots and a lot of water droplet shots. These kind of work, um, images would actually work superbly well. The luster satin and pearl finishes, these are a popular in-between option and they offer the excellent qualities of a gloss, but with a more neutral surface. This kind of surface is often found in fiber-based papers, which again have excellent DMAX, detail and color retention. You'll find subtle vari variations in the surfaces available on the market, from smooth right through to a highly stippled look. And these papers usually excel with images that have dense blacks, high shadow areas, and monochrome with wide tonal ranges. Matte finishes have no actual shine at all and are most popular for fine art prints. Matte papers have a range of textures that sit on a spectrum from velvety smooth right through to heavily textured. A texture paper can really lift an image off the page, especially with highly detailed subjects. So think of the peeling rust on the side of a boat or the fine hairs on a dog's face, or an oil painting with elevated brush strokes. And there's, again, some of your viewers I've seen on She Clicks, there's been some beautiful horse photographs. These kind of works would actually work superbly well on the textured range. So these wouldn't stand out on a smooth, glossy paper in the same way that they would on a textured matte paper. So what you're trying to do is bring your image to life and getting the viewer either the judge or if you're selling your work as the purchaser, to actually feel and really get your image. So with the right image, the look and feel of a matte paper can completely enhance the emotional and tactile experience of a print, giving it real depth. Now, when you're actually choosing the right paper, there's a few things that you need to consider. First off, can your printer handle a 300 GSM paper? Now, if you're actually, the answer is no, then you should be actually be looking at the digital photo range. Then you should actually decide and consider what surface type do you want to use? Do you want a gloss paper or do you want a luster paper? So if you want a gloss, then we would direct you through to the gloss and the smooth gloss range. A luster paper, more so for um, portrait work or anything like that, you can actually choose from a semi-luster paper, which is the oyster, the smooth pearl, which is a warmer base suitable for portraits, the ultra pearl, which has a stippled effect, 
or the photoluster, which again is a, a, a semi-luster paper, but it actually gives you a little bit more depth, but it is a heavier weight. So you need to consider, will your printer handle a thicker paper for using that particular one? If your printer can handle the actual heavier papers, then is a cost an issue on the papers? If it is, then you should actually go for the digital photo and perhaps the actual fiber-based family. Alternatively, you might want to choose from our fine art range where you can actually choose either from the matte papers or actually go for some of the metallic papers alike uh, to actually produce your images. Now, if you're going to be using the fine art papers, the fiber-based family actually gives you a lot of depth. These are the old darkroom papers. And the, this is the family of papers that I actually particularly love to use for my images. They give you lots of depth and contrast for your images. So therefore the actual viewer, you can really feel your images and the images will leap off the page for me. So I actually choose either the Royal Gloss, which is a slightly warmer base coat, or the distinction, which is a really white base. Alternatively, we also do the mono gloss and the gold silk, which is for warmer images. Because it's actually got a warmer base coat, it'll actually really enhance and give your images a really smooth and velvety appearance. So this works particularly well for black and white, where you've actually got some really rich blacks which will really accentuate and make you really feel the image so they really do perform well alternatively we do the fiber based pearl and that's actually a very good paper for portraits or you can actually use it for um, some landscape work as well together with the matte papers alternatively you can go to the fine art papers where we can actually go for a smooth fine art range where if you're actually creating a photograph which is creative and you're doing a lot of fine art and pastel work where there's some lovely beautiful snow scenes coming up recently on she clicks and those kind of images would be absolutely perfect for the portrait white paper because that being the whitest paper of the range it really does accentuate the image and gives you that lovely slight texture, but it gives you that feeling of the snow falling and the lovely feeling of all the trees as well. Photo art silk, actually in that family range, would actually suit landscapes if you've got graduation of color within your images. That gives you a lovely recession of color throughout the image. But on the other hand, it also works very well for portraits. So if you've actually go to a lot of reenactments or um, the Whitby Goth, for example, when we're all allowed to get out and shoot again, the actual reenactors that actually stand there patiently waiting for us to actually take the photographs, those beautiful clothes that they wear will work absolutely superbly well on that particular paper. So it really makes you, again, you feel the texture and smoothness of the paper. So it works beautifully well. The textured papers on the right-hand side the museum heritage, which is a slightly less of a textured to the artist's watercolor and the gallery. But again, it gives you that lovely feeling of texture and it will bring the image to life. So if you're doing a lot of rock images or sand or uh, landscape work, again, on the beach, there has been some on this evening on She Clicks, then those kind of images will work superbly well, giving you that lovely feel and the movement of the water. So again, what you want to do is enhance your particular image for you. Right, we're going to just break down the surfaces now. So the digital photo is predominantly comprised of resin coated papers. Now these are actually made up of a refined wood pulp base sandwiched between layers of plastic polythene. They are then coated with a microporous inkjet receiving layer, which is resistant to moisture, UV and fading. Now these offer excellent clarity, contrast and saturation and sit at the lower end of the cost scale, making them more affordable and ideal for everyday prints. Now, if you're using pigment inks, these kind of papers will last for about 10 to 15 years in the archival properties. So that's another thing to consider. The digital photo range in the permajet range actually consists of the gloss, 
which is uh, not a high gloss, but it um, really works superbly well if you've actually got some lovely detail and a good saturation of your colors. Oyster, a very good all round paper. So that's suitable for all aspects of photography because it's got a very white neutral base. So it's very, very good for any topic of photography. The smooth pearl and the smooth gloss tend to be a little bit warmer. So again, suitable for anything that you want a little bit of warmth in the actual image. So portrait work, or if you are lucky enough to actually been to Namibia, where you've actually got the beautiful sands and the dunes, then those kind of shots would work superbly well on that paper. The titanium gloss and the titanium luster are, are metallic papers. Now they have a metallic element within the paper to really emphasize and make them shine and stand out. Now there's been a beautiful black and white old car on She Clicks this evening, and I hope you've seen it on Facebook, because that paper would look absolutely superb on titanium gloss. So really, really well, it would stand out and really emphasize that. So try it. Photo Luster, the 310, is a heavier weight of really the oyster, giving you a bit more contrast. The Ultra Pearl is very good for um, anti-scanning purposes. It has anti-scanning properties, which actually stops your work from being copied. So if you're actually taking a wedding and you're doing some proofs, it stops people from actually copying the images for you. It also has anti-scan properties or anti-scuff properties, I should say. So if you rub the paper, it doesn't mark or dent. Matte Plus, again, superb for either landscapes or nature. A lot of bird photographers actually use this paper because of its neutral base and its smoothness, it'll bring the feather detail out on the actual bird really to the foreground and give you that lovely detail, which is so important when you're shooting nature. And the matte proofing is a, a matte proofing paper to actually test your images before you actually use your final print on your papers. The fiber base range, suitable really perfect for exhibitions, competitions, print sales, fine art and archival prints. Particularly works well with monochrome and high contrast images. Now these are made from alpha cellulose papers. So this is a high quality wood pulp and they replicate the original feel and appearance of the darkroom papers. So these are a perfect option for anyone searching for that traditional luxurious quality. I started my life in photography actually in the darkroom. So I was used to using the lovely richness of the darkroom papers. And you do get that using these paper types. So the term burrata refers to the layer of barium sulfate that is applied to the paper. Now these give prints an incredible detail retention and a wider tonal range. And these are particularly suited to black and white images. They have an excellent archival qualities, they're durable and they print wonderfully. And these are perfect for exhibitions and print sales. If you're a fan of the darkroom and produce work with really deep blacks and lots of detail, then these are just after that step up quality, or if you're after that step up, then the fiber base range is the one to go for. It actually consists of six papers in the range and you can actually choose from the varied selection. Now you'll see on the screen that all the paper types you'll actually see are varied in base color. So if I hold up a single sheet, and ask you what color the paper type is, you'll say it's white and go through the whole range and you'll still say it's white. But when you put them all together, you'll actually see the different tonal range of the papers. And this is because the coating that's being layered onto the papers will change its appearance. And that works differently with um, profiles which you use when printing your images. So once the color has actually been uh, laid down, it'll change an image so it'll look different on the FB pearl to the gold silk. And it's the coating which will ever actually change that look. <clears throat> the fine art range. Now these again are suitable for exhibitions, competitions and print sales. And again, fine art and archival prints. These are the highest grade, again made from alpha cellulose, cotton rag or a mixture of the two. And these materials are refined to remove any unwanted substances such as acid that will cause yellowing over time. And I'm sure that we've all got images in our uh, repertoire 
or the, or the family history, the older photographs, and they're tending to actually start to go yellow over time. I know I have going well, well back. So that's what happens. Now these are available in either smooth or textured varieties. The fine art papers are a heavyweight, high quality media. And these are suited to anyone that are looking for the best of the best. These papers are the perfect choice for those that desire an artistic finish and a long lasting archival quality, meeting standards equivalent to museum quality gicle prints. Now, if you're using pigment inks, which we always advise you to do, then the archival properties on these papers are 75 to 80 years. So hopefully, I don't think all of us will be there in that, that range of time, but hey ho. The fine art range, we've actually mixed our textured range with it. Now, these are the finest of the art papers that are available, from the silky smooth to the roughly textured. And there's a paper there to suit every photographer, an artist and all those in between. And again, whether it's for an exhibition, competition, or just to put in your own album, you'll find your forever paper. And that's what you've got to think about. So we start off with a portrait white and you can see from the whole range that it's a really, really white paper. So this would be excellent for actual snow scenes or any pastel images. So if you are actually more of a creative artist, then this paper would actually work superbly well for you. The portfolio rag is a slightly more warmer based coat. Um, so that would actually um, suit, again, artistic. So if you're doing some still life, it would actually work really well on that. Portrait rag. Doesn't mean to say that you're actually going to have to shoot portraits or print portraits onto the paper. It is very, very good for portraits because it gives you that lovely detail on the skin tones. So although it's actually not as white as the portrait um, white paper, it does actually emphasize the beautiful qualities of, of models if you're actually shooting in a studio. So particularly if you're using studio lighting, it'll actually give you that lovely finesse and softness and give you that lovely detail on the skin, which is really, really important. Amiga rag, very, very good for all those uh, Janet Lazenby images that are coming um, forthcoming on the She Clicks at the moment. After her lecture, I've seen Janet numerous occasions and, uh, and I actually met her uh, quite a few times now. And, and I can see all the attempts that are brilliant from the SheClick viewers. So really well done. There's some fantastic images there and they really work well. Amiga rag is the paper that, um, that she uses. And this is the paper type that I would certainly recommend. It's very smooth, a little bit warm, but not over much, but it gives you that lovely feeling on the uh, actual image and it works so well. Quite often you want to think, you don't want the paper to overpower your image. What the paper is trying to do is actually enhance your particular image, making it the best that it can for you. So it actually brings you those rich rewards when you're actually printing it. The alpha again is slightly warmer again, and that's a bit heavier, 310 weight. The photo art silk is the paper I've mentioned before, superb for landscapes with graduation of color in the image. If you've got landscape work where you've actually got some um, slow shutter speed movement in the water there, and you're actually receding off into the distance there, it works superbly well. If you've been doing a lot of slow shutter work with uh, pools like Susan Brown does, um, that actually works superbly well as well. Some really nice landscapes tonight and those would also work superbly well. You want that graduation of colour and the lovely softness to actually take you through the image. Museum heritage, gallery etching and the artist watercolour are our textured range of papers. Now these will actually really enhance peeling paint or if you've literally got any cracked walls or anything like that, abandoned buildings. So they're really, really good. If you've actually been to Turkey or anything, anywhere like that, that's got a lot of feeling in the paper and you want to bring out the feeling and ambiance of the actual uh, place where you visited, then the texture papers are the papers to try. Giving you that lovely feeling um, of the richness and the feeling of that you can actually want to go and touch the paper. Not that you want everybody to touch the paper, but on the other hand, you want them to actually get into the where you were taking the image and actually get that lovely feeling of the uh, 
of the, the whole feeling of the image. Very important. Gallery etching is slightly more textured, as you can see from the actual image there. So very, very suitable if you're doing still life shots. So if you're setting up a still life shot or fine art oil paintings, for example. So if you're doing a reproduction of fine art paintings, very, very good. A lot of actually artists will actually use the gallery etching and the artist's watercolor and actually sketch their image onto the actual paper and then paint onto it. And that works superbly well for artists. So the genre of papers are not always just for printing on digital printers. You can actually use them for additional um, items such as artists to actually paint their work on and they work superbly well. Okay, now double-sided media. <clears throat> When I was actually looking at the She Clicks website uh, not so long ago, um, there are quite a few uh, professionals there who actually obviously sell their work. Now, if you're actually using um, this media, the double sided media for card making and things like that, then these are the four that really that we would actually recommend. They're suitable for dye and pigment based inks, so they work well with both and they provide a beautiful neutral colours and outstanding image sharpness. So they're very, very good for greeting cards. Perfect for books, photographic albums, calendars, and greeting cards. We've got the double-sided mat again. So giving you that lovely softness and smooth feel at a 250 GSM weight. We've got the double-sided oyster, which is a semi-luster. So a very universal paper for any topic of photography. The double-sided portfolio is one of our fine art, smooth fine art range. Again, a little bit warmer, but it actually makes very, very good paper if you're actually um, doing like a graphic shot or an artistic or charcoal shot or something like that. That actually works really superbly well. The double-sided luster is one of our new papers which we're actually planning to launch. A bit heavier though, it's 295 weight, uh, but the actual performance of the paper works superbly well. So a little bit warmer than the Oyster, it's well worth trying when it's out, I recommend it. So right, where are we? Now, don't be afraid to try something totally different. Now the test packs in the Permajet range, they're a great way to dip your toe in the Permajet media waters. Matte papers, we do advise that should ideally be used with matte black ink. Now I say that, if you have a Canon printer, you might not um, have the worry to actually change over from the photo black ink to the matte black ink. The Epson printers, however, you still have to actually change over from the photo black ink to the matte black ink. So you need to consider that. You can actually um, decide to actually use the photo black ink if you wish, but if you actually want vibrancy and full contrast to your images, then you should really change over to the matte black ink because it really does give you that lovely saturation and depth to the color. But you can use the photo black ink. Now, we always advise that custom profiles should be used to maximize the paper. When I say that, every paper type has its own unique coating on it and has its own unique profile. Now, a profile will actually read the coating on the paper and actually will print your image with the correct colors. We do generic profiles on our uh, system for most printers now. And uh, so you can start with those, but if you're looking for that optimum quality, we always advise you to actually create what we call a bespoke target patch, where you print an A4 image out on the paper type that uh, you're using, send it into us, and then we will actually create you a bespoke profile, which can be used on your printer only. It'll only work with your printer. So always use a profile to get the best quality out of your image because then you can be uh, assured that all the colours are going to match what you've actually taken on the camera and what you've processed. And that's your whole aim of the uh, exercise. Now our test packs, we've actually got the three test packs and um, which are mainly the digital photo test pack, which is test pack one. Test pack two is the actual um, Barata family. And the fine art test pack is actually test pack three. So whilst all these are really affordable, 
In each pack, there is an actual A7 swatch. Now that is actually um, contains all the paper types in the Permajet range. So you can buy the digital test pack, which is a good place to start if you haven't actually tried our papers before. It's always a good place to actually start and practice your images, particularly if you're not used to actually printing. It's a very good place to actually start as it's not too costly in the pocket if you do make a mistake or you don't like the paper and you want to try something else. So it's always a very good place to actually start. But the A7 swatch will take you through the whole family type and the whole family range of the papers. So you can actually choose which paper would actually suit your particular image. Okay, now on the paper print tips, one side we always get a, a query of is I've mixed all my paper up. Now this is obviously in a test pack. How do I know which side to print on? Very easily um, solved. So if you look at it under the light and see that one side is smooth, that will be the back. And the other one side is the coated side, which is the printable side. So this actually giving it either a glossy or textured look. Now, some papers are really difficult to actually tell which side is which. So the best way is to excuse the COVID-19, but lick your finger and it literally just stop the actual top left-hand side. And if it's sticky, then that is the side to actually print on. So make sure that you actually pop that into your printer with the actual coated side, the printing side, actually facing you and pop that in your printer and off you go. And then uh, you won't have the problem. If you actually do by any chance print on the wrong side, then you'll notice that it'll actually come out really flat with no vibrancy at all. And the colors will be quite soft. And that's a, a huge indication that you've actually printed on the wrong side of the paper. So just turn it over and pop it in again. <clears throat> okay, this is um, a quite a common um, issue that we actually get with all paper types, regardless on whether it's Permajet, whether it's um, another manufacturer's make. My paper are curling and hitting the printer heads. So what can you do? Now some paper naturally curl, and these are due to the materials that they are actually made from, or because of improper storage. Now this can cause issues when feeding through the printer and this results in ink dirtying the edges. So either at the top or the bottom or either side. So the best remedy is to gently smooth the edges of the paper. And it's better to actually do it with white gloves on if you can. And just roll the paper over the rounded edge of a table. And that will just iron the actual um, curl out and just lay it on the flat of your hand and if it looks flat, then just present it to the printer and you would be absolutely fine. Now, always think about how to store the paper as well. If you actually store the paper on its end, it's naturally going to curl because obviously it's got nowhere to go. It'll hit the bottom of the box and it'll curl by, by nature of what it is. So always store your uh, packs of paper actually flat on a table or in the cupboard. So they're actually flat, they can rest easily and keep them away from too much heat as well. So don't put them by a radiator because that too will also make them curl. So think about where you actually store them. Now my prints are coming out dark or with the wrong colors. Now we always recommend printing through Photoshop, Lightroom or a similar photo processor using an ICC profile. Now this will ensure that your printer is actually talking to your computer about what paper type you are using and how best to print on it. Nine out of 10 times, this will instantly prove your results. So if you're already doing this and having issues, we recommend attending a print training course or getting in touch for advice. So think about it. And if you're actually getting um, the prints coming out too dark, the actual printer is actually telling you the truth. So it means that your monitor could be too bright. So we always recommend that you calibrate your monitors. So, but we do actually cover that. And I will be covering that in the next presentation in February, when we actually touch base with the fors and against of calibration and profiles, which we do strongly recommend. So think about it, but we can certainly solve the issue for you. 
Now, with the whole paper range, you can actually refer back to our Permajet Inkjet Media Guide. Now, it is actually number 21, which is out now. And I apologise that the slide actually says issue number 20, but we did have a computer issue this afternoon and I couldn't download the other one. So I apologise that the actual image shows number 20. For further information on the range of the papers, then please download our brochure from the website at www.permajet.com. Now, the key point to remember is that the final print must give you pleasure. And there is nothing more rewarding and satisfying than seeing your own work coming off the printer. So I know when I actually using a new paper, when I started using photo art silk, for example, that was actually by pure accident. And the reason was that I actually ran out of photo black ink. And I had some um, photo art silk paper at home and I thought, right, I'm gonna have to change over to the mat. So I did. And I actually printed off a portrait from actually the uh, Goths up north. And when I saw it actually coming off the printer, the satisfaction and the wow factor that resulted in the image coming off the printer really makes it worthwhile. So if you're not used to printing or haven't printed or find it very difficult to actually print, persevere. We are here to actually help you with your workflow and to actually make sure that you can actually print the images that you've actually taken and taken the time to take with the camera from processing to the actual printing. So please print them because there's nothing more rewarding than actually seeing your own work coming off. Now, those people on Facebook, remember that you can also become a SheClicks member for free. Now, the UK photographic industry is very keen to support SheClick members and you'll be able to get various discounts that are exclusive to members only. So remember that it's well worth actually registering to go onto the website. Now we have actually liaised with Angela and we are actually giving as Permajet 20% off all our sheet and roll media, but this is only applicable for SheClick members. So register for the website and you'll be able to take the opportunity to actually try our papers. Now these are for the test packs as well as the actual sheet and roll media. So this will give you the chance to actually try our papers at a really serious reduced risk, uh, rate. Now to assist you in your paper choice, Permajet have created what we've called the Knowledge Volume 1. There is going to be other volumes coming in. Now this provides a really comprehensive overview of the ins and outs of digital inkjet paper. You'll explore the basics from how each paper looks right through to the technical details of the paper. Learn what suits each paper type and when you might use it for your own work. So we've actually put all the examples of the different types of photography that you can actually, you might want to choose. So please have a look at that. With the knowledge, you'll gain the confidence to choose the right paper that's the right one for you. So please download it. Again, you can actually get access to it from the SheClicks website, where you can actually just click on the link and you'll be able to register and download it. So please feel free and enjoy it. We're also offering 10% off our Photographic Academy. Now, again, this is obviously for SheClick members. Now I've actually uh, run the uh, Photographic Academy and I have actually been doing so for the 12 years I've actually been here. We recognize the importance of the whole digital workflow process. And it's not just about the final print, that's not what we're aiming at, but it's from the actual taking of the photograph. So right through to creating your final image to the print, to print and final presentation. So we do workshops obviously on how to print and profiling and calibration. We also do Photoshop and Lightroom courses so how to actually process your images. We're actually just looking at now doing a, another course on affinity on the, uh, the new process that's just come out or recently come out. A lot of people are actually choosing this method uh, purely because it's a one-off cost. So you're not paying monthly as you are on Photoshop. So, and we're actually looking at that. So there's a whole range of different workshops that you might want to consider. 
But more importantly, it's like-minded photographers like ourselves that are getting together and talking about our images and the paper types. And it's really nice to actually meet the customers in, in person and actually just be able to um, retail stories, just like Angela and I were right at the beginning. Because nine times out of 10, particularly if, if you're going around the camera club circuit, then we've all met each other at some event around the country. So it's really nice to actually social atmosphere, quite relaxed atmosphere, and you do learn an awful lot while you're here. So please take the advantage of it. We're offering a 10% discount, so it's well worth taking us up on the offer. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, now if you need any further help and advice, then please contact me. I'm always here in the office, so and that's my direct line there, 01789 739207. Or you can always contact me by email, which is louiseh at permajet.com. If you would like some advice on your images as to what paper types you should choose, then I'm more than happy to actually have a look at your images and then recommend some paper types for you. Because as I said in the beginning, it's very daunting when you actually see the whole range of permajet papers that we have to offer. But if I can actually ascertain exactly what genre of photography you do, I can pinpoint you and show you and give you advice on the best paper types that I would suggest that you try. So please contact me. I'm really open to actually chat to you at any time. So don't feel that you've got um, an unimportant question. Every question is important to you. So ask away, that's what we're here for. Well, all that remains for me to say for this evening is I really thank you for attending. It's been a great pleasure to be able to present this um, evening for you. And please keep well and keep safe. Back to you, Angela. That was great, Louise. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, you made me want to print. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the whole idea, <laughs> actually. <laughs> And it's a good it's a good thing to do during lockdown, you know, sort through your images, perfect them and then print them. And it really transforms the experience, I think, of capturing an image, because there's nothing quite like having an image mm. on a piece of paper or even better, hanging on your wall. Exactly. Um, you know, that you've captured, created and finessed. So mm. thank you for that. It's OK, very so <laughs> some questions. Um, Susan has said, would you recommend uh, profiling the paper to your printer first, for example, with a Colour Monkey Studio, or should the supplied Permajet profiles work OK? The generic profiles, um, you can try the generic profiles first. The, uh, the problem with generic profiles is that every batch of printers that is actually produced from any manufacturer, the colour gamuts in the actual printers will change. So therefore, it's absolutely impossible for us as Permajet to keep on top of it. So if you find, try the generic profiles, and if you actually find that the colours are not quite right, or you're seeing a little bit of a magenta cast, which is quite often a sign that, that it is a profile problem, then we just go along the lines of printing what we call a target patch off on the paper type that you want profiled, send it into us, and then we will run it through our calibration device here and then email you back the profile. Now, what people don't realize, if for example, you're profiling an oyster paper, and then your friend down the road says, well, I've got the same printer as you, so can I have, would you like to email the same profile that they've sent you? It won't automatically work on their printer because it might be a different color gamut range. So it's always important for each individual printer to actually get their own unique bespoke profile. And that'll give you the optimum quality so you know what you're seeing on the screen is actually going to come out with the correct colours on the actual paper. Yeah. And the profiling target that people should print, do yep. they download that from the Permajet website or is yes, that... Yes, they can actually visit our um, www.permajet.com and go to the ICC profiling page where you can actually download a target patch and full instructions. We've also got videos on there as well for Mac users as well as PC users. So we actually cover both eventualities. And, uh, and then it can take you straight forward on how to actually print the target patch, complete the order form and send it into us. 
Now, if you have a problem with it, then by all means, please contact us because again, that's what we're here for. And we will talk you through and we can even dial into your computer and actually show you how to do it as well. Okay. It's very straightforward, so, but you have to be methodical. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Susan, it sounds like Susan has actually got um, a, a calibrator that she can use on printer paper. If you've yep. already got one, then the results should be the same, but they should be, they um, should be similar. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But of course, if you haven't got one, then you don't need to buy one. And of course, it's a free service that Permajet yes, offers. As long as you're and of using, you're doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but as long as you're using Permajet papers, it's a complimentary yeah. service, so it's not a problem. Yeah, because it's not the most exciting job, is it? You have to kind of move, click, move, click, and. Oh yes, yes. You have to go down each individual individual squares. So yes, mm. we've got a, a full calibration device here where you actually insert the target patch and it'll actually automatically take it through and right. read each square and each line separately. So it's, uh, it's uh, quite, a, quite a long process, but uh, it yeah. does work, believe me. The rewards are great. Excellent. Okay, so Lillian has said that she takes black and white photos of galaxies through a telescope. Could you suggest some suitable papers, please? Okay, depends if you've actually got a really, really um, dark background, i.e. black, um, then what I would actually suggest that you think about is again using possibly the Barata, the family, the Barata darkroom papers, because they will give you the richness of the blacks. So you might want to actually try either the gold silk in the fiber base family, in the Barata family, um, or alternatively, if you've actually got some um, white in the actual image, you might again use the photo art silk in the smooth fine art range. Okay. Good suggestions. Um, Barbara says she's never sure whether to use the Delta Matte or Matte Plus ICC profile when she prints on double sided matte paper. Which would you recommend? The Matte Plus. There is a double sided profile uh, for matte paper on there, but you have to look for the DS Matte. It won't actually say double sided, but if you look for the DS Matte, then that is double sided matte. If she's using the Delta mat, then that is a fiber based paper. So that was the old fiber based matte paper. So that is a, a different profile. So if she has the fiber based mat, then she should actually look for the fiber based matte profile, not the matte plus profile. Right. OK. Um, Anne has asked, she says, when printing, how do you actually change between the photo black and matte black inks on an Epson P600? Okay, I knew I was going to get that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the actual ink type will actually um, work on the media option that you actually select when actually printing your paper. So if, for example, you're setting your media option as Epson Premium Glossy, then it'll stay on the photo black inks. If, however, you're actually um, putting in Epsom Archival Matte as your media option, the printer will automatically change over to the matte black ink. OK, so okay. that you won't have a choice in that matter. So always, always be careful when you're actually selecting. And another tip as well, I will just tell your viewers in case they don't know. Obviously, with the lockdown, a lot of people might be actually using their printers to actually print draft documents or text documents. On the SCP 600s and the 3000s, et cetera, um, if you actually select your media option as draft or plain paper, it automatically changes your ink over to matte. So always leave your media option as Epsom Premium Glossy, because otherwise you're going to have to change over the ink. And now it's not too bad when you're actually changing it from the photo black to the matte, because you don't use a lot of ink. But when you're actually changing it back from the matte black to the photo black, it does actually use quite a lot of ink, cleaning mm -hmm. all the lines through when it actually changes back to the photo black. And a lot of people actually tend to think, oh, I'm only printing draft. I'm actually going to select draft or plain paper. But it really is an annoying feature that actually changes over the ink from photo black to the actual matte black. So just a word of advice there, because I've had a lot of people on the phone saying, why is my printer turned over to matte black? I said, have you been printing plain paper? Oh, yes. I said, well, that's the reason why. Okay. So just a tip there. 
<laughs> but with the Epsoms, don't you have to physically remove a cartridge and replace it with another one? Not on the uh, on the new ones, no. Right. Because on okay. the um, actual 600s and above, you've got nine in the bank there. So they're all right. there. Okay. So it's a solid bank. So you don't have a movable cart. It's a fixed, it's a fixed state. And then it automatically changes over. Fantastic. We used Great. to on the old 2880s and the 2400s. Yes. And cartridges <laughs> over. You remember that, Angela? I remember those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Susan said, please, can you remind me where to register um, as a She Clicks member with Permajet? So I think basically, Susan, if you go to the She Clicks website and log in and go to the members area, there is an area called She Benefits, and that's where all the benefits are listed. And you'll find um, Permajet's there and there's the code and there's links to the website and everything. So go there. If you can't find your um, password to get in have a look see if you can find the last newsletter because I always put the password at the bottom of the newsletter which is there would have been one about this um about this webinar um or you can email me at angela at sheclicks.net and I will let you know okay uh Monica says how do you organize a generic profile please so actually we've, we've kind of gone through that haven't we because um you, you touched on it earlier yeah, generic but it's worth explaining it yeah, exactly. When we actually get, uh, for example, we've actually just got um, the new Canon Pro 300 printers here in the uh, in Permajet and also the 200s. So what we have to do is we have to exactly the same as when we're trying to create a profile. We will print off the target patch from our website and actually then run each paper type through individually on our profile machine. And that will create a generic profile for people to actually try. So we create the generic profiles from the actual printers in our office. OK, so but that doesn't mean to say that the generic profiles are going to work on someone else's machine three, four months down the line because the batches might have changed. So it's always worth trying them because certainly it takes um, takes the hassle away from you. Um, but if you can't get the colours right, then that is the time to actually run the target patch off from your own printer and send it into us. And then we'll create your own bespoke profile. OK, it's probably worth mentioning at this point that your ink selection is very, very important. And, you know, that is part of the process. So you need to make sure that, say, if you're using an Epson printer, then you either use Epson's um, inks or use Permajet's inks, but you don't sort of get some that you can buy in Tesco or somewhere like that because they won't be consistent. They're not really designed for printing photographs. Um, so that the ink is a really critical part of the process. It is. When you're actually downloading the generic profiles from our website, you have that option, that choice. So you have the option to actually choose whether you're actually using um, OEMs, which are the original manufacturer cartridges, or um, if you're actually using our own Image Life ink, which we used to do for our EcoFlow systems, which we still do on the SCP 600 and the 800. Um, so you have that option. The compatible cartridges, yes, um, they are a lot better than they used to be, certainly. Um, so, but we find, or I find that you don't get the consistency. So when you're actually changing from one cartridge to another, particularly if you're using exhibition work prints, you want your, um, the consistency there with your colors. You don't want to think, oh God, the colors have changed. I've got to reprofile because otherwise you'll be finding that you're going to be reprofiling all the time. So it is always worth just watching, um, the profile. If you start seeing a color shift at any time, uh, then that might indicate that the profile is either dropped out or that uh, you just need to reprofile. Okay, useful information. Um, Sue's got an interesting question. Um, so she hasn't checked your website yet, but she's wondering if there's a gallery somewhere which show typical images for each of the papers. Perhaps is that something you could find in the knowledge? Um, yes, on the knowledge, there are images there. Um, that we actually suggest that you actually uh, look at. Uh, we do do an A5 um, sample, printed sample book, uh, which isn't free, unfortunately, um, but that actually shows you various images which are in our brochure. Um, so it'll give you some indication. But we are quite comprehensive within our Permajet brochure and we advise um, fellow photographers on what types of photography to actually try on the papers. 
that we feel that will actually work well for them. Alternatively, just give me a call. Unless you're okay. calling from Massachusetts. <laughs> Which a lady on she clicks Reversing the charges, yeah. <laughs> um, Elizabeth says, in the past, postage to Northern Ireland has been prohibitive, um, even for the trial packs. What is the, do you know what the current postage is for Northern Ireland and how does how do things stand with Brexit? It depends on the weight. And I'm going to say Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> Which we don't want to talk about. <laughs> no. um, yes, I mean, we have other alternative methods now. Um, it is on weight and they are quite strict on weights. Um, so up to two kilos, we can actually send out by raw mail. Um, so Northern Ireland is not too bad. Um, but obviously Southern Ireland is a little bit more um, costly to actually send out. But we do have our um, agents and dealers in Ireland um, who will actually stock our papers as well. So if you're actually looking for um, papers, then we can always suggest them for you to try because they're going to be a, a lot nearer for you and uh, more cost effective for your purse. So it's always worth giving us a call and saying that you're interested and where can you buy them. Alternatively, if you visit our website, Angela, you'll be able to see a where to buy as well. And so if you actually click onto that on the home page, that'll be able to tell um, your fellow photographers exactly on where they can actually purchase the papers from. Okay, so is that geographic? So if someone's in Northern Ireland- Yeah, Australia, it is. It's yeah. UK, Ireland and worldwide. So, uh, and Europe as well. So um, we cover quite a huge area. So oh, uh, all they've got to do is, is click what country they're in and, uh, and then the information will come up for them. Perfect. Okay, we'll take a look at that, that then, uh, Elizabeth. No worries. Um, Kirsty says she absolutely loves the portrait white, but finds that it marks up quite badly. Do you recommend any type of sealer to apply after printing? Depends, really. If you're using them for um, high key, um, and so they're really, really delicate, all the art papers tend to actually mark if they're not treated carefully. So um, there is a sealant that you can actually use. So you can either use the perma seal. Uh, or indeed you might be able to use a varnish on them to actually protect them. But what you don't want to do if you've got a high key image is actually you don't want to flatten the image down because it's quite a smooth, soft paper anyway. So the idea is if it's actually just for show or if you're actually mounting it to put onto the wall, then we would always advise you to use uh, or to purchase non-reflective glass and proper archival glass, which will actually sit on the image, protect the image, stop any UV lights actually getting through and affecting your actual final print. Uh, and more importantly, it'll actually won't actually take away from the actual image. They're quite new, muted glass and it's actually specifically for archival prints. So I would suggest that you always use a glass when putting them in the frame. Okay. Is she looking at more exhibition work prints for getting marked? Oh, uh, well, perhaps you want to answer that, Kirsty. Um, Sue has said, or asked, sorry, does Permajet offer a printing service? With we are content might be contemplating it. <laughs> we okay. don't have such, no, because the whole idea of what we try to do, and the whole reason why I actually joined Permajet 12 years ago was to try and help people print their own work. So, which is why we formed the Academy. Although it sounds like a daunting task, it isn't. Um, once you have all your ducks in the row with your calibration from your monitor, so making sure you're actually seeing and reading the correct colors on your screen, to actually profiling your papers and printing your actual final image, there's nothing more rewarding. If it's a cost issue, then we do have several labs that we can actually recommend um, who actually use our papers. So, and that's quite a selection on, particularly on the fine art range. So they might prefer to do that. So please contact me and I can certainly give you the information. Okay, thank you. Um, Lorraine says that she, um, she's done a workshop with Permajet um, and she's really found how, the way you've explained things very, very clear. Do you advise, there was a bit of information she was given um, and she wants to know if it still stands, basically okay. to use the printer's advanced black and white setting because it's better than the IC, than an ICC. <laughs> <clears throat> 
you have to try it to see, basically. Um, the advanced black and white on the Epsoms, um, it takes a while to actually get it right. But once you've actually got the settings right, it does actually produce a good print. But equally, if you've actually using a bespoke profile, then you can equally get the desired result. Now, the advanced black and white is really taking you back to the dark room in larger days, because on the advanced black and white um, system, you've actually got a color wheel. So you can actually adjust the hues and the saturations and whether if your image is a little bit blue or a little bit green or a little bit yellow or a little bit pink, you can actually adjust the color wheel. But it does take a little bit of testing. So there are ways to test it and you can actually save your settings on the advanced black and white to a default setting. So which you can call up when using the advanced black and white um, system. But it is, it is a little bit fiddly. One of the downsides of using the advanced black and white is that when you actually go into the color wheel, it's not your image that's actually on the screen. It's a picture of a lady. I'm not quite sure who the lady is, but that's the only image. It's not your image that you're manipulating. So it's very difficult for you to actually see and understand to actually change the colors when it's not actually your image. So that's the downside. So if I were um, her, what I would do is actually stick to using a bespoke profile to create you the actual depth because the new inkjet papers are producing some serious quality black and white now so and it's well worth getting a bespoke profile to obtain that richness and quality okay uh, Kirsty has come back she's saying yes it is um competition print so she can't use glass unfortunately yeah uh, yeah when I, when she said that i had a feeling it might be exhibition prints yes it is always very very difficult because when you're actually sending your prints in to actually be assessed whether it's an international or whether it's your own club competition nine times out of ten they will get marked um, so, which is why um, I always used to, when I was entering internationals, um, is actually reprint every time. So it's absolutely pristine. But again, that's cost as well. So because obviously the papers are not cheap and if you're reprinting them all the time. So you can spray them, yes, but that will affect your final image. So you wanna think about that, but test it and see whether it'll work for you. But just be careful because it will affect the final image on what you're trying to actually say. And the portrait white is a superb paper, particularly for the artistic work, which she probably does, I would think, by, by what she has said. Okay, thank you for that. Um, right, the final question, which usually means another few come in, but this is the final question. Um, <laughs> Anne says, and this is gonna kind of ask for a bit of a reiteration, really. She's never thought of printing her own images and she's no idea how to run a target patch off her printer, never mind how to send it to you to be profiled. So where should she start? Call me and we'll <laughs> okay. talk her through. Yeah. Now we can actually talk her through it. So you know, the first step is to actually purchase the paper type that you want profiled. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. the first step. Yeah. Whether it's a, a target patch, um relating to each family type there are three or four sheets of the various papers in that particular range of papers so test pack one is the digital photo for example and there are three or four sheets of each paper type in that family so you can print one on the target patch so give us a call either myself or my colleagues in the sales office will be able to assist and we will talk her through how to actually print the target patch off and also how to complete the order form and then send it in to us and then we, we will run it through our calibrator. Fantastic, that's very kind. Um, it's probably worth mentioning something that Janet Haynes touched on when she did her presentation, because someone asked about, um, you know, profiling uh, printers and mm. it, you really need a photographic printer. If you're talking about something which is a yes. hybrid that you use for, you know, mainly for office stuff, it's not, mm. that's not really the right type of printer to start worrying about um no i mean ideally you need to you need to have a pigment based printer um for photographic use really um but as you say office printers really don't give you the desired effect and they don't have the range of the blacks either which are more important um obviously the larger printers they use more colors you can go up to 12 colors on the the large a3 plus printers um and the the range of the colors and the quality of the image actually goes up according to what you want to use but it depends on your budget you know not everybody can afford a, a top-end printer 
Um, so the lower end, you've got the actual Canon 8750s, uh, which were equally as good. Uh, they're a five color printer, but they do produce a really nice piece of work. So it's, it's worth considering there are printers out there that are not hugely expensive and uh, that will be suitable for photographic use. Do you have a go-to printer at the moment or perhaps one that you'd like to go to? Yeah, I go to mine. I've got the Epsom SCP 800, mm -hmm. so which is the A2 printer. I decided, decided to take the plunge. Um, I started off with a 2400, went up to the 2880 then, mm -hmm. And, uh, and then jumped straight into the uh, SCP 800. And because I actually lecture, I'm rolling off quite a lot of uh, um, extra prints, usually about 180 prints for a lecture. And, um, and I'm doing that all the time. So um, I need a printer that's gonna be quite a workhorse. And uh, they have big capacity cartridges as well. So <laughs> hence I went, decided to go for the larger machine. Very nice. I guess you can always print smaller sizes on a big machine, but. You can't get a two you can, out you of can, an A3. You can, no problem at all. Yeah, I always print up to um, really A3 plus. So 5040 is the extra exhibition standard size for entering international exhibitions around the uh, around the UK and worldwide. Um, so, but I always use the same aperture because I find because my genre of photography I can actually alter. So I I cheat. I have all my mounts cut which is a bit naughty, but I do, <laughs> to make it easier. <laughs> I don't know, you've got to cut your slacks, yourself some slack sometimes. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Well, when you've got that many prints to actually uh, cut mounts for, it's, it's too many. <laughs> I shall never and see the you... light of day. <laughs> Sorry, Lorraine's asked, do you use Epsom inks or do you use Hermajets? No, I use Epsom inks. Okay, great. Well, um, just to remind people, as you, you said, you are doing another uh, webinar in... February, February? And I, Wednesday the 10th, the 10th okay. I knew it was around about there. So in that webinar, you're going to be talking in more detail about profiling monitors and profiling printers, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, profile, yeah, profiling your papers, calibrating your monitor and uh, how to go about it, and also showing you how to actually print the target patch off and how to install the profile when you've got it, as well as on a Fantastic. Mac and a PC as well. Yeah, great. Okay, so that would really be take people through the mechanics of everything. Absolutely. Right, well, there's lots of people jumping in on the question, the Q&A box and in the uh, chat box saying thank you very much. And it's been really useful. Um, thank Good, you so pleasure. much for joining us tonight. It's been great. Good. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So uh, good luck to everybody and keep well and keep safe. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Take care. Bye.